Wilbur Wright and his brother in America won the distinction of being the first men to fly a power-driven aeroplane. Kitty Hawk, USA, the Wright brothers. 120 years on, Cotswold Airport, UK. Another potential revolution is taking shape, flying without polluting, hydrogen-powered aircraft. The only emission that we're, we're making is, is water vapour, and that's the exhaust that, that the water vapour comes out of from the fuel cells. It's an expensive kettle, John. It's a big kettle, here. Yeah. <laughs> he may have flown RAF tornadoes, US stealth bombers, but says this is his most exciting challenge yet. The big thing from a test pilot's perspective is that it's remarkably similar to the conventional aeroplane, which sounds a and little... That's desirable. Sounds a bit dull, but it is <laughs> desirable from, from our perspective. We want it to be as similar as we can get it, especially because we're retrofitting these engines to other aircraft. We want that to be a seamless transition for, in the future for pilots. So no new planes, hydrogen fuel tanks, fuel cells and motors going into existing aircraft like this 19-seater Dornier. The big challenge now, compressing all this so you can fit 19 passengers in. Well, 2025 is when we plan to have our first engine uh, and aircraft certified uh, to go into service. Um, and then from that point, it's about scaling up the technology. Uh, we have on our sites uh, the next category up, the 80-seater regional turboprop. So that's the sort of thing that could buzz around all of the UK uh, and uh, effectively um, decarbonise all domestic aviation. They're thinking short-haul flights from, say, the Channel Islands or Hebrides in a couple of years, Glasgow or Edinburgh to London in about four, long-haul 200-seaters by the end of the decade. Everyone agrees, though, this is very early days. A ground network to produce green zero emission hydrogen at scale has to be in place, for example. The question for me is, is how do you scale that amount of renewable energy? Um, it's, a, it's a nice idea to have renewables local to the airfield. That does away with the transportation problems and transport of hydrogen uh, is, is, again, a big problem. Zero Avia envisages large solar farms at airports in the future producing green hydrogen on site. That gets compressed into liquid form, transported out to the aircraft, and away you go. Great in a graphic, problematic in reality. Although hydrogen is carbon free, which is a great thing, it itself triggers uh, a, a powerful uh, warming effect in the atmosphere it effectively increases the concentration of other greenhouse gases. So if our goal is to tackle climate change, we have to be careful with hydrogen, just like we're careful with carbon dioxide. Coastal Alpha is downwind full stop. Today Airbus, the biggest airframe makers in the world, announced new investments in this operation. EasyJet, Rolls-Royce and British Airways are trying to position Britain at the forefront of all this. But hydrogen remains around three or four times as expensive as polluting jet fuel. Zero Avia claim this will come down and hydrogen planes are far cheaper to operate. So you've got an electric motor. We all know how reliable these things are. Very few moving parts. Um, so high reliability out of that component. And then the fuel cells, they operate at low temperatures, low pressures, nothing like the stresses of an internal combustion engine, which is what drives the maintenance activity. So these things will last for two or three times the length of time between service intervals. So again, we save a lot of money for the operator. Once a wartime RAF base, Cotswolds Airport has seen some changes down the years. Now hydrogen, driving more via this US-UK startup. But they're not alone. There's intense competition. Major problems of cost, fuel production and refitting conventional aircraft yet to be fully overcome. But follow the money. Major airlines and plane manufacturers are buying into the prize of pollution-free, guilt-free flying.